So welcome everybody. Um, my name is Jennifer. I'm the assistant curator here at the Transcona Museum. And I'm Alana. I'm the uh, curator here at the Transcona Museum. And today we thought that we would do one more small talk uh, for the year 2021. And we thought about talking about winter holiday traditions. So um, what we have in the collection, and then maybe even some of our own traditions if we have any. So, so we do have the, I am monitoring it on Facebook. So if you have any questions or comments um, during our live here, then we can answer them as, um, as we get to them. We're just pulling up the live right now. Or we're trying, trying to. to. The last few lives that we've done, um, have we've just gone directly through Facebook but this time because we also have a presentation we are also showing it via we're doing it through um face uh there we go no that was our other one just now no that was the one I deleted I cannot play a video okay, okay. sorry <laughs> trying to do this said it's been a hot minute yeah it's been a while and like I said the last few we just came directly through Facebook yeah, so it was working properly oh wait there was something oh no nope. I just um, that's home well that's just a message normally it shows us that we're live I don't know if we are it says that we are but it doesn't look like we are I think it's bad. Okay, so I just stop the screen share for a second. And uh, it looks like I don't think it was going. No, it's showing it right there. It's showing that we're live and there's two people watching. Oh, okay. So we are live. So, wow. This is, um, yes. We try our best. So we're just going <laughs> to go back to the screen share. And Sure, not again. Okay. It's just, yeah. Okay. All right. We will get to the questions as we can. It might be the case that we answer them after the fact because I cannot find the live video currently on my feed. Okay. So let's just keep on going. So uh, before we begin our talk today, I'd like to acknowledge that the museum resides on Treaty 1 territory, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, Cree, Oju Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation. So I have broken up this um, talk into a couple segments. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is artifacts, um, some of the stories behind the artifacts, um, and as well as look at archival images. Um, so some photographs we have in the collection, and I have a few surprises in here as well, which you will find out. So photographs and stories. So a lot of these photographs come from the collection of the museum here. Uh, quite a few come from the St. Vitale negative collection, or like this one. What we call the collection, um, but it's actually the collection of negatives from the Transcona newspaper. It just came to us through the St. Vitale Historical Society, so we call it the St. Vitale negatives. Um, but it captures a lot of 1960s Transcona. Um, we've done a few small talks just on the collection before, so you can always take a look at those. But this particular image right here is a child standing outside a Christmas decoration, standing beside a Christmas decoration of Santa Claus um, in the 1960s um, house location somewhere in Transcona, but not as yet identified. Mm -hmm. This is a, another image from that collection. It's the home of Mr. and Mrs. Bloom. And they were the grand prize winners of the 1963 JC's Christmas light up campaign because I do believe they have Santa on their roof of their house. Um, and then this image actually appeared in the Transcona News on page six in, on January 9th, 1964. This one is simply titled Winter Beauty Staff Photo. And this was featured in the Transcona News, page three, January 30th, 1964. I really like that. I love it when the trees oh, yes. are covered in snow or hoarfrost like that. This is Jen, that, 
Jan Janinga Jr. Yes, seated in front of a Christmas tree. He was actually the New Year's baby in 1963. So this image was obviously taken a few years later. That might be Jan, um, depending. So oh, we're very sorry if we mispronounce any names. Uh, we're very <laughs> not so great with names. Mm -hmm. This is the Transcona Municipal Building with decorations and lights uh, featured in the Transcona News, page 18, December 22nd, 1964. And this was the municipal building that was not our building. No. Our building was also a municipal building, but this was a, a separate, different municipal building. Uh, Pandora? Along I Pandora. believe it was on Pandora. This is the front window of Mr. and Mrs. Cloucher of Yale Avenue East. So this one also appeared on in the Transcona News on page 18th, December 22nd, 1964. I just like how the, the window frames it all so nicely. Mm, and that's like a, a product that they would have put on the windows to frame that. It's really very, very nice. We have a number of photos in the collection of houses decorated, and I'm guessing that was a part of the whole Christmas light up JC's contest um, from uh, 63, 64. Uh, this is Matthew Bellaquier um, in naval uniform standing next to a Christmas tree during World War II. Um, so this was a recent addition to the collection within the past 20 years. Um, not sure where he was stationed when this photograph was taken, but it's it's a different, it's a different image. Um, you know, not at home, but overseas. Mm -hmm. This is Rob, oh, sorry, Bob Richardson, George Richardson, Hector Richardson, and Bruce Esselmont on Christmas Day, 1943. Unsure if that's transcona, it could possibly be. Uh, it's just not indicated uh, in the image, but it's a nice family photo. So this is a Christmas concert at Southland School circa 1957. And Southland uh, used to be a community um, just on the border edge of Transcona. So where the Transcona Cemetery is across the perimeter, across the floodway, um, along the Dugald Road, um, kind of that area in there is where Southland was. Um, and the school actually used to be where the floodway is now. Um, so. Uh, one of the, I think the last few images from the school that we have is the late 50s, early 60s. So, so this, like the, it shows May 1957. This might actually be like December 1956. Yeah, possible. This is an image of Christmas food hampers organized by the Transcona Knights of Columbus. And this one also appeared in the Transcona News on page two in January 3rd of 1963. So very generous donations uh, for food, Christmas hampers. This is Bill Blakey with his new tricycle um, photograph with his mother Kay, uh, circa 1952. And there is a story behind the bicycle. Uh, we actually have the tricycle in our collection and it has little wooden blocks that were added to the pedals because he couldn't reach the pedals when he got the tricycle. Uh, now, if you've ever seen or met uh, Mr. <laughs> Blakey, he's a very tall man. So obviously he grew into it. So it's very cute to see that he wasn't tall enough to use this tricycle when he is in fact a, I believe he's over six feet tall. So, But this is like one of the great, um, great stories and connections, you know, having the tricycle, but then also having the photograph and the additional stories behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're all about here is definitely telling those object stories with as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So this is an image of the Oxford restaurant, Christmas party, no date given, um, but it might be the 50s, 60s, potentially. I can't judge dress, like <laughs> dates by dress, but um, I really do enjoy the dresses that the women are wearing in these, uh, in this, in this image. That is uh, spot on fashion. This is a picture of our building, uh, the Transcona Historical Museum, with a large Christmas tree in front, circa 1989. So I don't know if it was actually then decorated, if the museum decorated it. This is well before my time here at the museum, but uh, that's a really large tree in front of our building. <laughs> a very large tree. That would, that's blocking like our whole front window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, this is an image of the Transcona Knights of Columbus nativity scene uh, that was featured in the Transcona News on page one, December 17th, 1964. 
This is three children standing with Santa Claus at Woolworths. And this appeared on page one, December 21st, 1966. And the, oh, the children are dressed up like um, the youngest child from a Christmas story and you know, all wrapped up in their <laughs> winter outfits. I can't remember the name of the, the character, but I, I love that movie. <laughs> This is an image of Santa Claus with Fire Inspector Chudley and his granddaughter at the Royal Bank, featured on uh, page one of the Transcona News, December 20th, 1967. Oh, I get all the names. Uh, <laughs> Janine Veenstra holding her first place Christmas coloring contest sheet. Uh, this appeared in the Transcona News, page one, January 18th, 1967. I, did, I do believe that there was an image of the runner up as well. <laughs> this is awesome. This I haven't seen this before. These are flamingos dressed up as Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Claus that were on display somewhere in the community here. Um, no date given. Um, but these, I'm pretty sure these guys were a part of the collection of costumed flamingos mm -hmm. of which we have a bride and groom version. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe they were done up for the 75th anniversary of the community. I'm not 100% sure on that though. Um, so of course we always work in flamingos. <laughs> this is the a staff photo at the Bank of Toronto, which is, our building was originally Bank of Toronto, but it's not this building. It's the one that was Kitty Corner across the street. So the old Canadian Bank of Commerce building in 1942. And this would have been this would have been the first year that they would have the staff would have moved from this building to that building, because um, they moved out in forty two, and then the municipal offices took over um, that year. So this is George Smith of Newman Avenue East putting up Christmas lights with the help of Ricky Bowles, uh, circa the nineteen sixties. And bonus, here's the bonus, butterflies. So I did some searching of our collection um, a few weeks back and I did find some holiday themed butterflies. So this one is called the Christmas butterfly. Um, there's the Latin name, I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce that. But it's a swallowtail butterfly from Sub-Saharan Africa. Not clear as to why it's called the Christmas butterfly, um, but we do have this particular butterfly in the collection, as I mentioned. And all the butterflies I'm going to talk about in this talk are on display currently in our hall gallery. This is the Christmas swallowtail, uh, a swallowtail butterfly from Christmas Island in Australia. The island has a species called the Christmas Emperor um, butterfly as well. So this one is also on display. Yes, we don't have the emperor, unfortunately, but we do have the swallowtail. Um, so these are snow Apollos. They're a, uh, a genus of butterfly um, that can be found in the Northern Alpine and Himalayan areas. Um, their color will change depending on the altitude. So they might look a bit more whiter or a bit more gray, depending on where they are in that zone. Uh, so we have a few of these on display as well. This is the morning cloak butterfly. And these are a Manitoba butterfly that have a lifespan of 11 to 12 months. They overwinter as adults and, and spend the winter frozen in a like a Cairo preservation. And so we have these as well. So these will tend to be the first butterfly that you'll see in the springtime. And because they live to be so long, they kind of look a little tattered um, in the springtime because you know the, the weather is kind of beating up their wings a bit, but. Um, there you go, bonus. We have winter themed butterflies. Whoops, I think I forgot the slide that the includes artifacts. our artifacts. Okay. So we're gonna move over to some of our artifacts now. So I'm gonna stop the share and switch the camera over to Alana. All right, hello everyone. So I now have the gimbal with me and I am going to 
turn my camera around and show you some of our um, artifacts that we have in the collection that relate to Christmas. If I can just figure out how to turn my camera around. Here we go. So now I, I'm dating myself and other individuals as well, but I don't know about you, but having a Eaton's or Sears Christmas catalog, that was how I did my Christmas list. I would open up the catalog, I would look through all of the toys, and then I would write down the ones that I wanted. So Eaton's Christmas list or Christmas catalog. Now this, I have to back up so I can get all of it in. This is one large stocking that we have in our collection. And this is just wonderful because it is actually filled with a whole bunch of different toys. Um, now this actually came from Blostein's and I can just imagine as a child waking up and that's your present under the Christmas tree or by the fireplace. Like that's your Christmas stocking. Just amazing. So there's like a rocket, a couple games, a, a big puzzle. We have like a tin toy here, some airplanes, looks like a jump rope, like just, oh, it would be amazing to get. And uh, see, there's some of the detail up here. It says like Mary, Mary, Mary with like a Santa Claus. We have some records in our collection with some Christmas music, holiday tunes. Um, so we have a number of these in our collection as well. We don't have a lot of audio in our collection, but we do have these, these um, records here. Um, we have some vintage Christmas tree ornaments. So here are some glass balls. We have some, it looks like grapes. Now these you would actually stick on your tree and they held a candle. So you would actually clip it to the branch and then light a candle. So having a, a live candle burning on your Christmas tree, a um, little bit of a fire hazard, but it, oh, one of them even still has the candle. It's a little smushed, but um, nowadays we have, you know, low energy LED lights that we plug in and uh, don't have to, uh, well, there's still a fire hazard with Christmas trees, but significantly less so since people stopped using real candles. We have these toys. They're little tiny hats. So we have this little Stetson hat and it actually comes with this box as well. And then this one, it's a tiny little Christmas Santa hat. Um, as well uh, with the Stetson box. So we have that. A couple more decorations, a bird, a uh, Scotch whiskey ornament. It's not a wine bottle. It says Scotch whis whiskey on there. A uh, couple wreath ornaments to also go on your treat. And then fortunately the packaging isn't in the best shape but we actually have some tinsel and tinsel isn't the most popular way of decorating your tree nowadays. But I even remember as a child putting tinsel up on the tree is a way to get a lot of sparkle on your tree. Hmm? Oh, and Jen says that it's making a comeback. So this is just an example of some of the Christmas or holiday um, artifact related items that we have in our collection. This isn't all of them, but we actually don't have that many more. And we don't have any artifacts of other holiday traditions. Um, so we don't, we don't have anything related to Hanukkah in our collection or any other holiday traditions that take place during this time of year. So we're always looking to add those to our collection from um, Transconians as well. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Jen and uh, we'll continue with the next part of this presentation. I think I just muted that. No, I just unmuted, I just muted you. Oh. Don't worry. 
And we're back. Hello. Okay, I'm going to share the screen again. Okay, so we're going to talk a bit about um, some of the holiday traditions that um, Alana and I have um, with our families and some of the ones that we've also started here at the museum. Um, so I don't think there's any other slides, so I'll just keep here. Oh, okay. Um, um, we can just turn it off. That too. That too. <laughs> so you don't just see our tiny little faces. Okay. So I guess um, here, what we've started doing a few years ago is we did our own version of Elf on the Shelf. Mm -hmm. um, we have a flamingo and you've seen him on social media. His name is Einstein. And in recent years, he's also been accompanied by his friend um, Indigo. Mm -hmm. They are unable to do uh, holiday hijinks here this year um, because they're spending most of their time in the display case right now. Yes, they're on display. <laughs> but uh, Einstein first came to visit us, or first came to the museum here when he got lost on his way to uh, the rooms in Newfoundland because they, um, they have a flamingo there in their collection. He was going to visit that flamingo and he got lost and he ended up here and he's enjoyed it ever since. So he stayed and during the Christmas season or the holiday season, he definitely gets up to shenanigans and um, doing all sorts of hijinks, which you can go back on our Instagram and see some of the stuff that he's done in the past. Um, so, and this year, though he hasn't had a chance to get around much, we have yet another flamingo to add to our collection. Oh, here he is. This is Junior, um, Floyd Flamingo Junior. <laughs> So he, um, you'll see him pop up on social media every now and again for the next week or so before we hit on holidays. But he is also part of our holiday decorating that yep. we've done here at the museum. Um, over the past few years, we've even kind of stepped up our decorating that we do in the galleries. And we don't have a lot that we're able to do, but some garland and some bows and some poinsettias and I really really like how the gallery looks um, during the Christmas or holiday season it's always fun to put up and then uh, taking down is always a different story <laughs> but I, I do like how it transforms the space um, we do a, a staff a mini staff party usually on the last day or two before we head for holidays um, and we do a bake exchange as well so when we first started the bake exchange I think we were a little over ambitious because there was a lot of food and treats and uh -huh. most of us ended up in a sugar coma within the next two days um, so we've definitely scaled it back a bit but we still do it yeah it's fun and I have things that I make just for Jen's family because they like them so much <laughs> uh, but also if we have any volunteers who are actually coming into the museum and working on projects, we invite them to take part in the bake exchange as well. So some years we've had a number of individuals, you know, participating uh, with us during our own little staff party as well. Um, what else? Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do it this year just with COVID restrictions, but we also do have a larger uh, staff volunteer board appreciation mm. um, event that we do here. Um, so it's just a great time to, you know, gather with our, our donors and our members and our volunteers and our board and staff and just have a nice Christmas party here. Yeah, uh, we, we have our holiday party. We um, acknowledge all of our donors and we thank them for every, all their support uh, through the year. We have outgoing board members. They're acknowledged at that event as well. Our members, we give an overview of everything we've done in the year. And it's, I, I miss it. It's the, you know, we got it to, it was, it was a lot of fun to do. And um, we would have a really great turnout, but just unfortunately just with COVID and everything, just with the current restrictions, we just can't have, people in the museum at that the numbers that we would yeah. typically have so we're looking at maybe doing something in the springtime to um, thank our donors and our members and our volunteers i'm trying to think um i mean as soon as december rolls around we're wearing christmas sweaters um you know the christmas, christmas music music yeah <laughs> that starts um another you know it's just a small little thing but even during um our appreciation evening or at other times, you know, we'll 
we have it we have a tv in uh, the back gallery where we have slideshows with information but sometimes we'll we'll just put on one of those holiday fireplaces too <laughs> that's always it gives a nice feeling as well um we try and do at least one family crafting event um so we're doing one this friday saturday so there are still spots available so we'll um it's a 45 minute um time slot so you can come register make a few crafts, you know, do a scavenger hunt at the gallery. Um, it's, we're looking forward to it. We've had a few people RSVP, so if you're interested in that, head on over to our website and register. One tradition we were actually weren't, another one we weren't able to do this year is typically, in a typical year, the Transcona Biz gets a number of Christmas trees that they put in the square that different um, local organizations can purchase and then decorate for uh, like a decoration contest. And then the winner gets a, uh, the last couple of times it was a donation that to your charity of choice so we try to come up with very creative <laughs> ways of decorating our christmas tree we made a snowman one year we did we made we turned our christmas tree into a dress another year uh, another year it was like old-fashioned christmas yep um so unfortunately that didn't happen this year and and we missed it, but uh, looking forward to when we can do that again and other creative ideas we can come up with to decorate our tree. And that's just all the stuff we do here and in the community. Um, so what are some of the stuff you do with your friends and family? Um, so I grew up, I'm Ukrainian. So traditionally for me, uh, Christmas Eve is a large meatless uh, dinner. When I was younger, my aunt explained it to me. Um, that you just couldn't eat anything that might have been in the manger with Jesus, but that's not actually the reason why. That's just how it was explained to me. Um, I don't know if we have the traditional 12 dishes in the typical Ukrainian Christmas Eve dinner, but that was always getting together with my dad's side of the family. And then usually Boxing Day, we would get together with my mom's side of the family and, and do Christmas with her family. Now, as I've gotten older, um, I still try to have the meatless Christmas Eve dinner and then um, Christmas uh, with my family. And then um, if, if we, you know, can see other family members as well. Um, it's another one that we do. I have uh, my kids get to open up one Christmas present Christmas Eve. Uh, and then Christmas morning, we all grab our stockings and just open them first thing um, while it's still quiet. But what about you guys? Um, I, I myself is, am Ukrainian as well on my dad's side. So we did the, the Ukrainian meal um, on Christmas Eve once and we had the whole 12 dishes. I was very young, so I didn't want to eat most of it. <laughs> as you do, because I didn't see pierogies. Um, we, we we did it that was that was great um we always keep our tree up until ukrainian christmas because we hate taking the tree down like right after christmas and we have an artificial one so we can get away with that mm -hmm. um my family lives here um my mom's side of the family is from nova scotia my dad's side is from um out west so um usually we would when we were younger we would travel um to either either location for Christmas. As we got older, that wasn't possible just with scheduling. So grandparents would come to us. Um, and as you know, my sister and I get older, um, we have new families that we introduce. You know, she's married, so she she does a lot of stuff with uh, her husband's side of the family. Um, I'm not seeing someone. So I'll have a couple Christmases this year uh, with his family. Um, so it's kind of Christmas looks a bit different every year and that's fine um, because it's it's just being able to be with friends and family and just you know enjoying and everything. Um, we used to open um, and we always knew what it was it was PJs we get new PJs every Christmas Eve so that's the gift we would get to open and my mom would always get like so like oh my gosh this is so much fun let's just open everything right now and I'd be like no we gotta wait till next morning. <laughs> So it's usually we, we, you know, we wait till the 25th, stockings first, and then the rest of the presents. And we always go in chronological order, um, mm -hmm. just to keep some semblance of order. Uh, <laughs> growing up, my family would, everyone's name would be in a cup and you would draw names out. And then once everyone had, they'd all go back in and then you draw names out. Okay. So Christmas morning would actually take quite a long time. And that was actually kind of nice, you know, getting to sit around and see everything and, and talking about it. So that was another 
tradition that we had. Um, you know, we do we do the typical you know turkey dinner now. Um, you know, all the wonderful leftovers and stuff like that for a couple of days afterward. Um, my sister did convince my parents to do tacos on Christmas Eve uh, once. So that was that was really fun. Just really breaking from tradition. We um, did that one Christmas day too, because Christmas Eve, we had the big dinner and then Boxing Day, we were having another big dinner. <laughs> so it's just like, let's just do tacos and stuff. And it, it was fantastic, actually. There was margaritas and different, like a whole bunch of different types of tacos and fajitas and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. I'm trying to think of other things we used to do. Um, we used to watch Christmas movies on oh, Christmas yes. Eve. Um, so there was usually one or two. And it'd always be like the same ones, like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That is the story. That is Christmas Eve. We would go to my aunt's and then we would go to mass and then we would come home and we would watch Christmas Vacation. <laughs> and that was my Christmas Eve growing up. And we were always late to mass. So we'd always stroll in <laughs> last 15 minutes or something just in time for carols and then go home and, and watch Christmas vacation. So it's not Christmas for me if I don't watch Christmas vacation. Um, yeah, even baking, we still bake a lot of the same stuff we, we used to as kids. Um, shortbreads, gingerbreads, trail mix, uh, not trail mix, but bits and bites. Um, you know, as we get older, we change it up a bit, just slightly. So, you know, I mean, I love making cupcakes. So cupcakes are definitely a feature now of uh, any baking I do. Um, yeah, sugar comas though, always in a sugar coma over Christmas. <laughs> and, and a couple of times during our bake exchanges, we've actually gone and remade some of those 1960s That's recipes right. from the, the Transponder News cookbook because they're really good. So we've actually incorporated some of those into our like Christmas bake exchange that we've done. There's some definitely that we would not do again, that <laughs> potato candy. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It no. tasted like- Thrills. It tasted like soap. Yeah, like soap, like toothpaste or something like that. Like it's so sugary. Uh, no, to me, it tasted like I bit into a <laughs> bar of soap. And I'm like, this is not good. This is, no. So mm -mm. I don't recommend that one, but- some of the other ones that we've done, you made a shortbread that was really, oh, really the shortbread good. Shortbread was nice from from that recipe cookbook. So, um, yeah, that's some of the stuff that we get up to. Um, we always try to drive around and see yeah. the decorations, um, and the there is a Winnipeg Facebook page that is like Winnipeg Christmas lights or or something like that. And they list all the really, really good ones in the different communities and areas of the city. So we've gone and we've driven around and some of them are, wow, people, <laughs> people, but a lot. And there's a great house on Kildare. Yeah. That is always uh, Kildare closer to Plessy's Avenue. They are just always done up so amazingly with decorations and lights and statues and stuff in their yard. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Portage of Prairie, so there was one street just a block over from my parents um, that we called Candy Canyon Lane, and it started with just one house, and, you know, the decorations got more and more grandiose over the years, and then, you know, neighbors would be like, okay, we gotta top this, and then the street, it was just blinding um, at its height, and we'd always joke, that's that's the only way Santa would be able to find Portage, <laughs> is that street, <laughs> you know, you know. Um, but they've scaled it back in recent years, but it was like, that was the street. It was, you couldn't miss it. Yeah. So I, I can't recall any other sort of traditions. It's also my husband's birthday is on Christmas day. <laughs> so Christmas morning is Christmas morning. And then the rest of the day is his birthday. So he, because as a kid, his parents worked really hard to kind of separate the two. So it wasn't all like, here's your birthday and Christmas presents <laughs> all together. It's really sort of separated that out so we, we keep that tradition um another one is like the pets always get a gift too oh heck yes <laughs> our dogs the they have their own stockings and everything so mm -hmm. um our our previous dog mandy um she absolutely knew what was going on so she would dive head first into the stocking <laughs> pull out anything she would open the gifts so you had used to have to hide anything with tissue paper um behind the tree so she can get it but she would she would rip into it um my parents dog penny 
she's like completely oblivious a little bit. It's like, oh, no, open. And she's like, no, oh, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. So I'm just going to turn it over to people who are joining us on Facebook. Do you have any holiday, Christmas, other um, festivist <laughs> traditions that uh, you'd be willing to share in our talk here today? Um, you can leave your comment down below and then we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up. Um, and if you're watching us after the fact, you can take, you can comment and we will, we definitely monitor any comments after the fact. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, my family, like my dad's side of the family, it's been years since we've actually gotten together for like the big Christmas Eve get together that we used to have and I miss it but you know everyone's gotten older and spread out across the country so um but I do miss that Ukrainian Christmas Eve <laughs> meal I miss it a lot actually even the kucha which is the wheat soup mm -mm. nope my family makes that too but nope we still make like pierogies and cabbage rolls um that's that, that is the Ukrainian part of our Christmas that we still maintain. Oh, there would, there was, there'd always be like smoked salmon because fish was okay. And then there was like the pickled herring. Oh. I just avoided that side of the table. <laughs> I'd have shrimp and, and stuff like that. Like I said, it wasn't a traditional, like super traditional Christmas Eve meal, but um, yeah, it was also, you know, when, my whole family was able to get together and you know as people get older and families grow it's just harder and harder to do that so mm -hmm. I do I do miss that that part of it but you pivot you shift and you come up with new you know new memories and new traditions mm -hmm. like I can remember one year it was snowing so badly we couldn't get to my aunt's place where we would have Christmas Eve dinner so my parents put together a big one and that is probably the first and only time my mom made French fries in like a deep fryer. <laughs> and I remember that because they were so good and just thinking like, well, why can't we do this all the time? And then I think it was the next day we, the roads were in better shape and we could go. Um, but I also remember other Christmases where there was no snow. I do remember a few of those and it's, yeah, it just, it didn't feel quite right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can't control the weather. We all know that. Yeah. And then as it's, you know, kind of going into the new year, a new tradition that I've started with my family is because I have young kids, they're not staying up till midnight, New Year's <laughs> Eve. So together with some friends, we have like a kid friendly New Year's Eve party where we count down to six o'clock at night. And uh, we've done the, not sparklers, the thing you and it shoots confetti confetti things oh and um I bought some really good confetti ones and I'm still finding confetti in my house <laughs> because there was so much of it that came out but doing things like that obviously that didn't happen last year because of COVID but um if we can make it happen this year you know, we might look at doing something maybe even just outside but um trying to build even like a new year's tradition as well growing up the new year's tradition was my parents went out to a party and they would rent movies for us and would buy like a whole bunch of snacks and treats and stuff. And we didn't get that stuff very often. So it was like really special. Um, and it would just be like watching movies all night. Ours was, um, it was a games night. So we played dominoes or Ramoli. Um, Monopoly never made it on because that's just that's no you don't play Monopoly. That's not, a, that's <laughs> not a, that's the only game my brother had at her house, and you can only play it so many times when you go to visit before you despise and loathe it. Um, other times we would, you know, we we'd start the games early, then we switch to movies, or you know, we do it vice versa. Um, but it was always very quiet and chill. Um, every once in a while, we'd have like a bigger New Year's Eve party with a bunch of people. A couple of years ago, my sister loves fondue. So she's like, let's do fondue. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I ended up taking over a lot of the cooking and prepping and just like the shuffling of dishes, but it's like, it was fun, but it was like, okay, we're good for a couple of years. I think we actually did a fondue um, New Year's Eve dinner last year too, my family, but it was literally, we bought the fondue packet from Safeway and warmed that up and <laughs> cut up bread and veggies and that was dinner, but um, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so, so yeah, was, yeah. So those are just some of our <laughs> holiday traditions that we have, and we thought we would um, share with you what we have in our collection related to holidays and Christmas. And, and again, to point out the fact that we have a hole in our collection where we don't have anything that represents other holidays that are happening in the same time period. So we would like to add those into our collection as well so we can better represent everyone um, in, the, uh, in the community. Absolutely. And uh, we didn't have any comments on Facebook, so. Like I said, if you're watching this after the fact, please, we'd love to hear any of your holiday traditions, stories, and like Alem said, if you can fill in some of the gaps in our collection, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be it for us today. Um, oh, oh, we oh. do have someone. Oh, no, it's just a comment saying thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so yeah, so this will be the last small talk of this year. We'll probably have a couple in the new year. Um, we're going to try and maybe do some in person, um, you know, combination of in person online. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, just a few things to wrap up. Um, if you're looking for Christmas gifts, we have a gift shop, a small gift shop over here. So um, come on down. You can also purchase some of our, some of the items online and then curbside pickup here. The last day to be able to do that will be December 23rd because then we're on holidays. Yes, the museum will be closed during, um, between Christmas and New Year's and we will be back at the beginning of the new year. and. We have lots of plans for 2022 and we just hope that we can have them happen. <laughs> well, you know, we're pretty good at pivoting if we have to, but um, be really nice not to be uh, shut down at all next year. That would be really great. Yeah, not knocking on wood. <laughs> but um, big plans for next year, big plans. Hopefully we can make it happen. So, but stay tuned and uh, yeah, we'll see you in 2022. All right, thanks for joining us today. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.